All right, you guys, this is Geometry Chapter 1, Section 7, the midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. Our learning objectives are to find the midpoint of a segment and to find the distance between two points in the coordinate plane. Um, we are definitely going to use formulas to find the midpoint and the length of any segment in the coordinate plane. Um, I love the midpoint formula because all it is is your x-coordinates added together divided by 2 that's your x-coordinate of your midpoint and then your y-coordinate added together divided by 2 that is all they are and then on a number line it's just the coordinate of the two added together and divided by 2 so let's look at what that means so AB has endpoints at negative 4 and 9. So A is negative 4 and B is 9. So we're going to go negative 4 plus 9 divided by 2. So that's 5 divided by 2. The midpoint is at 2 and a half right here. For the Cartesian coordinates, we're going to take our x values, which are 7 and 2 add them together and divide by 2, so that's 9 over 2 is 4.5. We're going to take our y values, our negative 4 and our 5, and add them together, divide by 2, that's 1 half divided by 2 is 0.5. So our coordinate of the midpoint is at 4.5 comma 0.5. So it's at 2, 3, 4 and a half, up 1 half. So let's see an example of that. JK has endpoints at negative 12 and 4 on the number line. So here's my wonky number line. Free handed it can you tell. And all we have to do is add them together and divide by 2. So that is negative 8 divided by 2 and it's at negative 4. Alright, so now when we have coordinates, what is the midpoint of our s when the endpoints are 5, negative 10 and 3, 6? So we're going to take the x-coordinates and add them, divide by 2, which is 8 over 2, which is 4. We're going to take the y-coordinates, add them together, divide by 2. And that's negative 4 divided by 2, which is a negative 2. So I put those together, and my coordinate is at 4, negative 2. That's as hard as that gets. When you know the midpoint and the end of the segment, you can use the formula to find the other point. So, for example, a midpoint is at negative 2, 1, and one end is at negative 5, 7. So, we have the end results. We need to fill in the blank to find the beginning results. So, if x is equal to negative 2 on the midpoint, then we got our x-coordinate plus our second x-coordinate divided by 2. So the process for these, and this will happen with all of these kind of problems, you want to multiply each side by 2, and then simplify, always. So in this case, our negative 2 times it by 2, times both sides by 2, so... So we get negative 4 equals, and then 2 divided by 2, get rid of our denominator, it just makes it 1. 
and then we are going to add five to both sides. So our x coordinate of our end point is 1. Now we do the same thing here. We multiply by 2. We get 2 equals 7 plus y2, and then we subtract 7. And we get the coordinate of the y value is, the y value of our coordinate is negative 5. All right, so let's test that out. See if we got it. The midpoint has coordinates 4, negative 9. The endpoint has, A has coordinates negative 3, 5. What are the coordinates of B? So we're going to, let's start with our x's. So 4 is equal to negative 3 plus our coordinate of our x value divided by 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And add 3. So our x value of our coordinate is 11. And then the y value is, so we're going to multiply both sides by 2, and then add 5 to both sides to get negative 5 equals our y value. Then put it all together for our answer. Coordinates of b are 11, comma, negative 5. All right, let's move on to the distance formula. Distance formula is the x values subtracted and squared, the y values subtracted and squared, added together, and then taken the square root. This is based on the Pythagorean theorem, so that's where the squares come from, and the square root. All right, let's see this in action. So here's our distance formula. We're going to say that negative 7 is x1 and 5 is y1. So that negative 7 goes in for the x1, 5 goes in for the y1. And we're going to say that 4 is the x2 and negative 3 is the y2. And we're going to plug that in for x2 and y2. Then we're going to simplify. Now, if you're a terrible simplifier, please use your calculator. If you don't know how to use your calculator, please come talk to me about that. So we got 4 minus negative 7, which is 4 plus 7, which is 11. We have negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8. We're going to square those two and add them together. It's the square root of 185, which is not a perfect square, so we just type it into our calculator. 185 square root, and let me show you how that works here. For the computer calculator, you input the number first, and then take the square root. All right, let's see if we can do the sample problem on that. <clears throat> SR has endpoints, so what is the distance SR to the nearest tenth? So for A, we're going to start out with the square root. So our distance equals x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And we're going to let this be x1, this be y1, this be x2, 
and this be y2. So our distance is equal to 3 minus negative 2 squared plus negative 1 minus 14 squared. We're going to simplify, simplify, simplify. Three minus a negative is three plus two is five. And negative one minus 14 is a negative 15. And we get 25 plus two 25, which is square root of 250 to the nearest tenth is 15.8. All right, and then to answer the reasoning, in problem three, suppose you switch G and U do you get the same result and why? The answer to this is yes, because you are finding the differences and then squaring. And this gives you the same number. No matter which order you use. All right, so let's take a look at the zip line course. Um, you're harnessed to a cable that travels through the treetops. You start at platform A, zip to each of the other platforms. How far do you travel from platform B to C? Each grid unit represents five meters. So B to C. So you find the coordinates first. B is at negative 30, negative 20, and C is at negative 15, comma 10. So you plug those into the formula, negative 15 minus negative 30. It is negative 15 plus 30 or 15. 10 minus negative 20 is 30. Square them, add them together, take the square root. All right, so let's do the same thing, but we're gonna do it from D to E. So let's find our coordinates for D. I'm just going to write them right above here. So D is 20, 20. And E is 30, negative 15. So this is going to be X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So let's plug them in. Um, so we got 30 minus 20 squared. I'm going to change to a pen. Plus uh, negative 15 minus 20 squared. 30 minus 20 squared is 10. Negative 15 minus 20 is negative 35 squared. So, let's put my calculator. I know 10 squared is 100. Plus squared 
equals 1325 And the square root of that loop is 36.4 meters. And that's the end of section 1.7.